Hi there friends again. Another episode today of Tactical Enlightenment. Today we will continue on our series of intermediate tactics. Uh, this series is designed to help players who aren't quite ready for uh, some of the more advanced tactics we show on the channel. Hopefully this can help springboard them to there, right? So today we're actually going to be using all eight core, all eight different divisions as you can see, uh, but it's not going to feel as difficult uh, if you try to reenact something like this as it looks. Uh, one of the keys to this battle is simply going to be ho holding the high ground here. right? You can see there's a gentle slope leading down to the enemy. And what I'm doing here is simply lining out our units in a roughly a C shape. You can see, or maybe a U shape is better from our perspective. right? We've got infantry on the side. right? And what we're essentially going to try to do here is hold a static position against the enemy. We have archers. right? We're going to use those archers. And we're going to advance them up the hill a little bit here. And you see what I'm doing. I'm sort of spreading them out. Right? Next, on the right and left flank, I have infantry, both lined up kind of, uh, in a, and again, in a C shape. And that's the 1st and 6th Divisions is basically lined up. Uh, and the purpose of that is I want to essentially collapse on the enemy. I want to have flanking attacks on the enemy when they come into the battle. The reason I think that a lot of intermediate players can advance to this level, though, is because our archers are fire and forget. Uh, no pun intended. I'm just going to be having the archers sit up there and rain arrows for this entire battle. Right? So in the middle, I've got one other thing that's a little bit different. I have the third cavalry line, and they're also going to be in a very static position. Right? I may move the cavalry a little bit, but for the short term, all they're doing is providing a block right there in front of the infantry. And all that does is reduce the amount of infant, or enemy cavalry that can get through. Right? So we're actually going to dismount them. And that leaves their horses there, like you see in a big line. And then we'll move the 3rd Cavalry, which are now infantry, right? their men on foot, directly behind those horses. The benefit, of course, is that this huge Volandian cavalry charge, that's inevitable anytime you're facing Volandia, it will now run into those horses if it tries to charge our center and that will slow them down even before it gets to our infantry and of course behind that we have our archers pounding everything as well now you see a lot of times the enemy with Volandia will bring cavalry along the flank so again a little bit of a defensive measure here I'll be showing you how to use cavalry as blocks right we'll be setting up cavalry essentially in a big long line in shield wall formation right that's F2 F2 and all that does is create basically a barrier that the enemy cavalry is going to have a hard time getting through. Meanwhile, the rest of the strategy of this battle is quite honestly to let our archers go to work. Right, They're firing downhill. That gives them a range advantage on the opponent. Right, You see on this side I have the second cavalry. Right, You can see I'm highlighting them. They're in a shield wall. Basically at the angle I would expect that Volandian cavalry to sort of to charge us. Right, You can sort of see Volandian cavalry or, or over that, that hilltop to the right. And that cavalry is just sitting there effectively like a policeman or, or a physical barrier trying to prevent us from being charged down. Right here they come. And I want you to watch how effective this is when they pour in. Now, Vlandi is taking a good strategy here. They're using this hilltop. They're trying to sort of gain an angle on us, but it's not going to matter. We've got our infantry lines uh, designed, so it doesn't really matter how they attack. Right? They're getting pounded with arrows. Our skirmishers are hitting them. It's a very bad result for them. And see their cavalry just charged. Look at what a pathetic attempt it was. Like 10 horsemen got through, or maybe 5 horsemen got through the whole side. On the other side, they're trying to charge as well, but a similar block over there is limiting their effectiveness. Meanwhile, look at our archers just raining downhill. This is a huge advantage because their, their archers, it's actually crossbowmen, on that hill, they have to run a long ways in the face of arrows before they even get to the point where they can shoot. Now, another thing we're adding into this battle here is just a concentrated attack. Uh, it happened a little bit faster than I could explain, but basically I charged with the 1st, 6th, and 8th Division into this line of infantry. Right Now, I'm running behind them because they're all facing my infantry lines, and they're absolutely pigs to the slaughter. If you have a good two-handed weapon, or maybe your character swings a polearm, run in behind them, and while they're occupied face to face with your enemy, you can just maul them with your two-handed weapon. So the next thing to deal with is the enemy does have this line of archers up on the hill. You can see they're being absolutely pounded by arrows, right? 
I'm actually moving my archers back. You don't have to move them at all though on, in, in this scenario. You can just leave them there. What I'm actually going to do here is use cavalry and move them right into the face of this force, right? I'm just going to assign cavalry in a big long line and move them right up on, onto them. So that first enemy wave is almost completely dissolved. Uh, there might be some cavalry, some spare cavalry that are running around, uh, but their infantry is destroyed and their archers, look at how badly they're in duress, right? They're now grabbing their shield <laughs> and charging down this death hill because they're getting pummeled so badly up on that hill by arrows. Right, so their archers are dissolved, their cavalry are more or less dissolved, and their infantry got completely annihilated by the concentrated attack. Right, I know this is eight divisions, I know that's intimidating for some new players. Well, it's certainly new players, but even intermediate players, that's kind of intimidating. But you can see the archers are still just sitting there shooting, right? Now some of them are out of arrows, but those that have arrows, or those that are finding them on the ground, are still dealing death to the enemy at range, right? All right, so that cavalry block did its job over on the side. I didn't have time to explain it. I should have paused uh, a little bit more uh, when that was happening. But basically, the job of that cavalry is to get right in the face of that uh, enemy ar archers, in this case crossbowmen, to slow down their attack, right? It makes guys break out uh, their, their melee weapons when there's cavalry in their face. They're shooting at armed cavalry instead of your troops. It's a very positive result for your battle. Now this little sad one mile an hour cavalry charge sort of shows you the spirit of the enemy at this point, right? They're running uphill, they're going against a total uh, gauntlet of firepower, archers are still raining, you know, they're getting shot off their horse, and their first wave got completely annihilated in like two minutes, right? At this, at this stage of the battle, perfectly honestly, and this you could definitely F1, F3 all your units, which is the, the everybody charge command, right? The legions of jokes about it on, the, on YouTube. Um, but this is, uh, we're, we're going to be just a little bit more tactical. We don't need to just pour down there. We're going to continue to hold this high, high ground up here. Right? And we're doing that just to limit losses, just to be a little bit more surgical. Uh, you can, again, you can certainly in your game, if you don't want to, if you don't want to take the time, you can just F1, F3 and have your guys barrel forward. Uh, but we're going to wait for a little bit better moment before we charge. The enemy attack at this point is fairly piecemeal, right? And again, look at their cavalry getting bottled up on our cavalry. That cavalry wall is almost like an iron wall they can't get through. A steel curtain, if you'll allow me to use that term. They, the enemy just can't seem to get through it. And after their horses charge into it and are stood still, now they're just absolutely destroyed by projectiles. We've still got archers, the infantry's throwing javelins in their face, right? It's a very bad result for the enemy. You see there's a few archers left here on this ridge that I'm going to go to work with. Now what I'm doing, you see those troops following me, is I have my elite core. I recommend you make something like this, even if you have seven, eight, nine companions, you know, and a couple family members. Make an elite core of high-end troops, right? Your, your family members eventually will be strong, and simply drag them along. Use the F1, F2 command. And what that does is it makes them follow you and it's basically your own little personal vanguard, right? If you're getting in trouble, you back up and you back up right into them. And then you can be protected from them while they viciously attack the enemy. So that archer wave dissolved, right? All I did there, that flurry of commands, uh, you know, sometimes I do this almost like breathing because I've played and, and had so many battles, is I moved those guys back into position, right? We're, we're maintaining the high ground here. Now this is last little pathetic wave is coming up. We're going to concentrate firepower. Right. I've got the first, sixth, and eighth divisions again now on charge. Archers are still shooting. Right. I don't want my archers charging into battle. Not in a battle like this where it's going to be a rout. And all we're doing is waiting in that situation for the enemy to get close. You don't want to do it piecemeal. And we're charging them all at the same time. Right. What that does is create just a huge, vicious... Uh, attack of inertia that the enemy just is not going to be able to deal with. Never mind the fact that they're down to their, you know, their tier three, two, tier four troops. Um, you know, I mean, this, this battle was obviously over as soon as we decimated their vanguard, um, but now it's completely over and, you know, bordering on a massacre. All right, so we've got one more episode after this. We're going to put the whole picture together. Uh, I'm going to show people essentially how to use all eight cores. We're going to try to really slow it down, and we're going to enact what's called a kill box. Um, this final episode 
It brings out one of the most lethal tactics that I've come up with. Uh, I certainly didn't create it like in the history of war, but the idea is essentially to get your enemy to attack a seemingly uh, vulnerable position and then collapse upon them on all sides. Um, I've seen variations uh, you know, that are from ancient warfare called the false gap. Uh, I don't want to use that term for this strategy because it's a little bit different, as you'll see. Uh, but that'll be our next episode. Um, and we'll, again, we'll use all eight, eight cores, but we'll have two or three static units. You can see how bad that was a massacre, right? We lost 106, 107 troops for their thousand. Um, anyway, so we'll, we'll enact this kill box. We'll show you how to use all eight units with the exception of the archers again, which will be largely static. And we'll show you, uh, you know, how to truly decimate uh, a large force. Uh, thanks again for watching. Uh, this series again is part of our intermediate series. This series here, there's a playlist if you start from the beginning uh, and just play down to the bottom. I think that'll help almost any player with a decent amount of experience advance from kind of the intermediate stage and get you ready to advance to, to much more complicated advanced tactics where we're using cavalry feints, we're using sacrificial squares, uh, and other tactics to destroy your enemy in Bandalord. I appreciate all the subscribers in the comments, so please continue to do so, and I will see you next time.